What unexplainable thing happened to you as a kid? Posted two days ago. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. When I was about 16, about 40 years ago, I went shopping in another town with my father. I sat in the car next to him. We drove away between two towns with two lanes. The way was bended slightly. We had the inner lane to the right. And while we drove, suddenly another car coming from the opposite direction went flying over our car. I clearly remember seeing the bottom end wheels. The next thing I remember is looking my father in the face, and he was looking at me with the same unspoken question. Did you see that car just fly over us? There was silence like a vacuum. We were so flabbergasted we just continued on our journey. And because I can't remember any details about the rest of the day, somehow I came to the conclusion it perhaps was just a daydream. Years later, after my father had passed, I asked my mother if my father ever mentioned the incident and indeed he had. TLDR. Weird incident, accident was true. When I was about eight or nine, we had a small kiddie pool in our yard and also we had a big turtle sandbox that came with a lid that looked like a shell. They were directly next to each other. My cousin was babysitting my two brothers and I one day while my parents were out shopping somewhere. While my cousin was inside dealing with my brothers who are younger than I am, I decided I would hide in the kiddie pool and when she came out looking for me, I was going to pop out and scare her. I took the turtle shell lid and placed it over myself in the pool which had maybe one and a half feet. I laid on my side so that she definitely wouldn't see me. I sat in there for about 15 seconds before I figured out that the lid had created a suction to the bottom of the pool and I was stuck laying on my side underneath it. I struggled to get out, but I couldn't get enough push to get one of the sides up. I then saw a hand, I don't remember any features on it, put its fingers underneath the edge and pull the lid of the sandbox off and out of the pool. I got out gasping for air and looked around, but I was alone. My cousin and brothers were still inside the house. I told my mom about it later that night, and she said it was my guardian angel, and that it wasn't the first time it had saved me. When I was a kid, I was convinced I saw an alien spying on me. It was when I was maybe seven-ish. I was laying in bed awake when I looked over and saw this weird, hairy creature hunched over and staring into my room through the crack in my door. It was built mostly like a man, two arms, two legs, one head, etc., but completely covered in long brown fur and had glowing yellow eyes. Think Chewbacca, except his face is completely covered by hair, so the only feature you can make out are the glowing eyes. It was just crouched there looking at me until I hid under my blanket for a while and was gone when I worked up the courage to look again. I didn't know what it was and even at that age, I decided the next morning that I was just dreaming or something even though it didn't feel like a dream at all. But within a few days, I checked out a book about supposedly true alien encounters from the school library, not because of what I saw, which I didn't even think of as an alien, I just liked alien stories, and nearly flipped my lid when I got to a story about someone having an encounter with aliens that looked exactly like the thing I had seen. To this day, as an adult, I wonder about it. It's easy to brush it off as being a result of an overactive imagination, and 95% of the time, that's what I think of it as. But there's still that 5% that's weirded out by finding this story that describes exactly what I saw. At my parents' house, there is a mirror in my basement that has just always been there. When I was about six, I would have recurring experience where I would see a pale figure in a blue Navy cadet outfit out of the corner of my eye in that mirror. This happened at least a dozen times, but the figure would always fade away after a second. I never felt threatened or scared, so I never mentioned it to my parents. So after a year or two, these experiences stopped and I sort of forgot about it. One day, ten years later, a local historian stopped by my house and talked to my parents for a little. He explained that he was researching local World War II veterans and apparently one of the first casualties at Pearl Harbor was a Navy sailor that grew up in my house in the 30s. The historian said he would come back with more information, but we never saw him again. I've had my fair share of unexplained events, but this one has definitely stuck with me the most. The basement mirror is still there, and I still get a little uncomfortable when I see it, lol. When I was 11 or so, I was up in my sister's room reading, and my older brother was in his room down the hall. He was and still is a tornado that wrecks everything he comes in contact with. He has schizophrenia but was not diagnosed at the time. 
though at that point he was quickly spiraling into his madness. Needless to say, I didn't like him very much and was pretty scared of him to be honest. He's a bigger dude with the most distinctive, deep and hollow voice that anybody could immediately recognize. Anyway, he randomly started to call my name. The first time I just ignored him, so he said it again and again and each time his voice raised and became increasingly more angry to the point where he was basically screaming at me. He screamed, Liz, get the fuck in here. I could just hear the rage in his voice. Finally, I got up, went to his room and opened the door. His light was on and his music was playing, but he was nowhere to be found. Being the dick that he was, I thought he was playing some stupid prank on me, so I started looking for him. I checked under his bed, in his closet, and when I did that, his light bulb flickered, and even in the bathroom. At that point, I was pissed, so I went downstairs to ask my dad if he could make him stop bugging me. He said, what do you mean? Your brother isn't here. He's been out snowboarding with your sister all day. I felt the color drain from my face. I was visibly shaken, but I'm still not convinced that my dad even believed me. To this day, I have no idea what it was that was trying to lure me into my brother's room or what it wanted. Thinking about it still makes me shudder. This was one of many experiences in that extremely haunted and evil blue house, but it was the most unsettling and memorable experience I've ever had. I was maybe seven or eight years old. My baby brother was two or three. I was playing with a large, heavy metal hammer smashing rocks in the driveway, with my baby brother about three feet away from me just piling up rocks and being a toddler. My aunt peeked out the window and caught me swinging the hammer around like a viking. I was not supposed to be playing with my uncle's tools, obviously, and she screamed. Startled mid-spin or swing, I let go of the hammer. It sailed quickly through the air directly toward my baby brother's face. Amazingly, I swear, hand to God, the hammer stopped mid-air just inches from my brother's face and just dropped straight down to the ground. To this day, my aunt swears that she saw my brother's guardian angel appear, stick its wings out, and block the hammer. I vividly remember the hammer stopping and falling mid-air, but I personally did not see any such angel appear. Neither of us ever mentioned the incident until I was 26, and my brother at the time, 23, brought it up casually. Hey, remember when you threw a hammer at my face and aunt stopped it and made us play inside for the whole day? Me and our aunt were flabbergasted that he remembered the hammer at all. My aunt had never told our parents as she didn't want them to think she wasn't a responsible babysitter. Spoiler, she was not. Still a miracle that my baby bro wasn't killed or maimed that day. I was almost kidnapped when I was about two. Someone took me out of my mom's shopping cart and took off with me. My mom said she turned for one second and I was gone. She found me in the parking lot just standing there. When asked what happened, I was pointing in a general direction and saying, the lady took me. One day I was grounded and folding laundry in my room. I had to be around eight to 10 years old. I remember vividly folding and placing my outfit for the next day on this folded bed thing that was basically one giant cushion that folded up into a chair so I could easily find the clothes the next morning. After I placed the clothing on my chair, my mother called me downstairs to the living room. I was pretty sketched out by the dark, but I would zoom past the darker corners on my way down the stairs and I'd be able to fight off the terror that way. Well, after I spoke to my mother, she sent me upstairs for bed and to brush my teeth. So I brushed, then happily skipped to bed to read my book and relax in my newly cleaned bedroom. I reached my bedroom and immediately noticed the clothing I laid out on the chair was gone. I stood there for a few moments in disbelief, suddenly terrified. I searched my room as my mom was rushing me to bed. I'm trying to tell her that the clothing was gone. She then realized I hadn't laid anything out for school the next day like I am supposed to do every night, totally disregarding my explanation and absolute horror. As I am attempting to re-explain that my clothes are straight up gone, she's scolding me, talking over me. I look past her shoulders and realize that my wall, the closest one to where my chair sat and my clothing was, had a massive slash in the drywall, like Freddy Krueger himself slashed through it or a massive bear or cougar. I pointed it out to my mother and of course, that would convince her that I truly did not do it myself. I mean, why would I? The marks in the wall were way above my head first of all, and I never did find those pants or shirt or socks or undies ever again. 
Despite my mom having made me search for hours, completely convinced that I had hid it all myself for whatever weird-ass reason, this is just one of the many strange incidents that happened in my childhood, and one of the biggest reasons I will always believe my children when they are scared. Stranger things have happened. DL. DR. Clothing I had just folded and laid out for school disappeared completely, and mysterious claw marks appeared on my wall within 20 minutes of being absent from my bedroom. Mother didn't believe me, never found the clothes, and the mark on my wall stayed there for the rest of my childhood. When I was little, maybe 11 or 12, I woke up to my entire body bouncing in my bed as if I had been dropped perfectly horizontal. I distinctly remember bouncing enough to not touch the mattress. I quickly checked under my bed and around my room, but my only sibling wasn't strong enough to lift me or my bed, and my dad certainly couldn't fit under it without it being obvious. I tried throwing myself to recreate it, but nothing matched the full body bounce. This was distinctly not the falling sensation when you're drifting off to sleep. I still have no explanation for how it happened. I was playing hide and go seek up at my family's cabin outside when I was like eight. I was the youngest of the cousins and was always getting left behind. I decided I was going to cheat and peek through my eyes when I was counting. I saw what I thought was one of my cousins, we were all wearing the same family reunion shirt, take off towards the lake. So when time was up, I followed. Sure enough, I could see my cousin standing behind our boathouse. I snuck up behind her and yelled, gotcha. When she turned around, it was me, but it wasn't me. It was like seeing the version of yourself in front of camera or something, mirrored. I screamed and fell over, actually ended up cutting my hand pretty badly on some of the sharp rocks that peppered our yard trying to scramble away. Then my cousin, it was actually my cousin, back to her normal self, ran to get help. I ended up getting everyone in trouble for playing by the water, and when I told my mom what happened, she thought I was sleep deprived and made me sleep in their room the rest of the trip. I kind of brushed it off, but as an adult now, I still remember it so vividly. It almost makes me feel just sick to think about or type out. I wonder if I had some type of seizure or something. When I was about 9 or 10, I randomly woke up in the middle of the night, like fully awake, fully aware. I don't sleepwalk or anything either. My bed was right underneath a window, so I decided to sit up and watch the moon and clouds. As I looked through the window, I remember seeing a circular thing with green lights underneath hovering above the trees outside my window, and after a few moments, it flew away and disappeared. To this day, nobody believes me, despite me never seeing or experiencing anything like it since. I used to love sleeping on the couch when I was younger. They were super comfy. The problem with it was I would essentially get sleep paralysis. Multiple times when I would get sleep paralysis, there would be a dark entity spirit appear during it and basically just stare at me. The last experience I can recall, I remember seeing two separate entities. I never felt like they would hurt me, but the fear I got was crazy. 